Yeah, so um, I, I'm uh, Levi Pierce. I'm, I'm a scientist at uh, Relay Therapeutics. Um, yeah, real, real quick on Relay. Yeah, we were founded in 2016. Uh, I've, that, was, that was when I joined, so I've been with them uh, since the beginning. We were, I think I was number 15 when we joined, and now we're, we're over 100, uh, 100 folks now in, in Cambridge. So, um, you know, we're, we're basically an oncology-focused uh, small molecule uh, drug design company, um, and um, we're, we're expanding now actually also into other targets outside of oncology. So uh, stay, stay tuned for that. But Relay, really, just the, the sort of basic idea here is, is if we go back to, say, 1990, Vertex, uh, you know, is, a, is sort of a big pharma that we're all familiar with. They basically sort of pioneered this, the use of, of X-ray crystallography uh, to, to help better drug a protein. And so here on the, uh, on the far side there in 1990, they, they had sort of uh, the first crystal structures that they were using to do drug discovery. And really, the idea with Relay now is, is to sort of combine uh, computation along with experimentation and really start to think about proteins not as static things, but, but proteins that are actually in motion. Um, and so what this has allowed us to do is to come up with new ways and new, new ideas to, to drug uh, proteins. So, you know, one of the very early stages of drug discovery is actually finding a small molecule that will, that will actually have some function or, or inhibit your protein. And one of the big challenges is chemical space is just vast. Um, and if we think about how many compounds have actually been made to date, there's been about 100 million that, that have been made. But this is sort of, uh, if we think about this in terms of drops of water in the ocean, you know, uh, this, is, this is still a very small amount. And I would say the other big uh, breakthrough in the past couple of years has been something called uh, synthesis on demand. And uh, this is very much like compute on demand, but, but basically, there's a few companies out there that can synthesize around 10 billion possible small molecules, and it's just they take small, uh, simple building blocks, and a chemist in a lab can combine those, and you can get this combinatorial effect. So, and, and the representation of those, basically we, we sort of have this string representation of all the possibility, uh, all those different, different combinations of small molecules that we could put together. And, you know, one, one way I like to think about this is we, we need to come up with some way to encode that, to take those, those strings and encode those into, into an actual three-dimensional small molecule that we can actually use to do uh, some, some virtual screening. So uh, the first step here really is, is to take these strings and convert these into, into three-dimensional what we call conformers. And so for a given molecule, we can have slightly different conformations of that small molecule. So if we generate all these, we, uh, we started with, with about 10 billion, and we can blow that up, and that actually becomes roughly about 20 billion once we include stereoisomers in there. Uh, and then once we add in the, the different conformations of those small molecules, we actually get up to about 4 trillion. And if that, that basically takes up a, a footprint on S3 of a, almost 300 terabytes. Which, which is still small, I think, in terms of the genomics world, but, uh, but that's pretty, pretty large in the small molecule world. And we do all this on batch, and um, this, this is a, a pretty straightforward workflow, and this takes about three days, and we, you know, just spin up 50,000 cores, and, and we, we crank through this. So. But this is the first step. So this is digitally encoding that library, and once we have that library encoded, then we can move on to the actual virtual screening. And here, basically, we, we have a, a protein of interest that we're trying to drug, and, and there's some binding site in this protein, and now we have all these virtual compounds that, that a chemist could make, and this is where we have basically 10 billion of these possibilities, and then we have some sort of docking engine and, and you can pick your favorite uh, uh, engine that you would like to use, but this is basically going to give you a score of how well that small molecule fits into that protein, into that, that three-dimensional protein. And at the end of the day, we basically get a score that comes out of that. 
And, you know, you can think of this as, as things that fit really well uh, into the protein. Those will have a really good score. Things that don't will have a bad score. So now, now basically what we want to do is we want to actually run this on, on that full 10 billion uh, molecule library. And again, this is all done pretty simply uh, with, with the batch system. So here basically we have our, uh, all those conformers stored in S3. And what we can do is basically spin up, uh, we spin up roughly 100,000 cores and we can just crank through that and dock all those small molecules into one single protein that we're interested in. And at the end of the day, what we get is we get a ranked list of all 10 billion small molecules against one protein target. And then we can pick 50 of those compounds or 100 or 200 to buy. And, and the chemists will actually make those and those will get shipped to us um, uh, in, in Cambridge and we can actually screen those and test those in the lab. So we've done this now a couple times and uh, the results so far, uh, you know, again, just, just walking through this workflow is, is we have this, you know, these billion molecules prepared <clears throat> and we can spin up 100,000 CPUs and we can come up with this purchase list. So at the end of the day, for one of our targets, we purchased about 500 compounds and in, in basically the biochemical assay that we tested these compounds in, we had a hit rate of about 8.2%. Now in another target, we purchased 150 compounds and we had a, a hit rate of about 10%. So, you know, different targets, um, you know, we also varied the number of compounds that we were buying, but uh, you know, this, was, this is what we decided to, to buy here for, for these two targets. So that actually is, is quite successful. I think a, a typical high throughput screen uh, just a, in an experimental high throughput screen, you know, you're, you're looking at hit rates 1%, 2%. So, so here virtually we were able to actually uh, uh, come up with a good, good hit rate here. And if we just take a step back actually, there's, there's a great uh, reInvent talk back in 2013 uh, and Novartis actually had screened 10 million compounds back in 2013. Uh, and it took them about nine hours to do that. And they used 87,000 cores. So here we're, we're now docking 10 billion molecules using 100,000 cores, and we're doing this in just under 24 hours. Uh, and this is just kind of a visual representation of what that actually looks like. Uh, so I, I didn't put all 10 billion on here, though, so... Um, and now, now the, the real question, though, in my mind is always, it's great that you get some, some hit in a biochemical assay, but what's really, I think, special about Relay, too, is we have just a, a phenomenal group of structural biologists. And so what you really want to see, as a computational chemist especially, is you want to see one of those, those compounds that hit in the biochemical assay in a crystal structure. You want to see that bound to the protein. And what we got... I can't show you the actual <laughs> three-dimensional structures, but I can show you the, the actual crystals. So these are the crystals of those, those compounds, uh, two of the, the hits actually bound here. And we got a 2.6 oxygen structure out of one and a, and a 1.7 oxygen structure out of another. So uh, if, you, if you guys uh, wait, wait another year, we'll, when we'll be back, we'll show you the actual structures. But uh, so, and really, once you have that structure, that just allows you to do another round, a whole other iteration of this. So, so we actually saw some rearrangement of the protein, and I mean, you just you learn so much once you get that the actual structure of the compound. So, so a few questions now. Uh, kind of what's next here? This seems to be working really well for us. Um, you know, we, we've we've now done this for several other targets. Um, I think there's a couple questions, you know, one is do we really need to, to virtually screen all 10 billion molecules or can we be more clever about this? Um, another question really is, is that I didn't touch on here, but, but how do you actually pick that 500? Do you just take the 500 best scores or do you try to take some diversity strategy in terms of picking the, the molecules that you're actually going to buy and purchase? And then really the one that I like the most is how large can we go? 
can we do can we screen a hundred billion molecules or a trillion? So maybe if I'm back next year, uh, we'll we'll be at a trillion molecules by then. So, um, but I also wanted to uh, to basically acknowledge uh, John John Weiss who's here in the audience and and also uh, Nick Pabone. I think you know I'm I'm. I can talk a little bit more about the engineering side, but there were several iterations here because when you're running 100,000 instances of this, shaving off every little bit of time to make this as fast as possible really, really saves you in the end. So, and Inamine is the is the company that we actually uh, have been working with to to purchase these molecules. Uh, this is the group that has basically synthesis on demand, and then OpenEye is the docking software that we've that we've used here. So, and I'll open it up to questions.